Hello and welcome to The Damage. My name is Gillian Hamilton and I am your host for The Damage podcast. Today we discuss 88 Days and Counting, featuring the lost, the unemployed, the stressed, the scared, the uncertain, the strugglers, our friends, our partners, our kids, our workmates, and I can guarantee you there's people in your network that you're not sure of yet. Everything changed 88 days ago when Australia went into lockdown, and it wasn't just our country. Worldwide, nations are facing and have faced the greatest amount of change that we've ever encountered in our lifetimes. People are not okay. Lifeline, which is an Australian uh, call service for help and assistance, is currently receiving a call every 30 seconds. In March, they received 90,000 calls. They received, in April, 90,000 calls. And in May, 90,000 calls. This is the most amount of calls that they have received in the 57 years that Lifeline has actually been even open. 927,000 people in Australia are officially unemployed. The most that have ever been unemployed in 27 entire years. For someone of my age, this is the most that have ever been unemployed in our whole entire working or lives and probably the most that have ever been unemployed in even our parents' lives. It is predicted that suicide rates will increase in this period of time. The Australian government has appointed an Australian medical health professional to help look after the Australian people. The Australian mental health systems are currently overwhelmed and were overwhelmed prior to COVID-19. They expect an increase in experience to these systems of up to one third increase in demand on top of what was already being troubled in meeting those services before. I believe it's never been more important to ask and to really encourage an answer, a real answer, and for us to really be sure that we are caring about the people in our lives. It's really up to us who we have to acknowledge right now, the privileged ones who have a job, who have a career, who take home a regular salary, to be the ones to ask, to be encouraged. We have to be bold. And if you're in a workplace right now with employees, you have to ask. It's very difficult sometimes to see who is actually struggling. It's not always obvious. Chances are that there are ones around us that really need to talk. And as safety professionals, I know my door has always been open and I've always been what seems to be the person that people have spoken first to. Remember, even a rock will crumble. And it's okay for people to not be okay. We have to consider that some people still are not able to be at work. Still not able to be at work. While some of us are so tired and so fatigued from working so hard in the COVID periods, we have to remember that some people still legally cannot go back to work. Their businesses have not yet opened. And even if it is legal to reopen, it's not financially stable for their business to reopen. We have to also consider that as we get closer to JobKeeper being uh, ended in our economic period in Australia, this will also lead to an additional level of challenges to the people we know and even the people we don't know but people who are in touch with our businesses, whether it be our staff, our staff's partners, or our customers. Just myself this week, as I left my office, 
I actually met a lady who had just become homeless. When I asked her what kind of work she normally did, she mentioned that she worked in a nightclub, a place that hasn't been able to open for 90 days now. If you haven't had your wage for 90 days, things are gonna be a little tough. And if you've just been told you can't stay at that place that was just working out okay for the time being, you're gonna be in a really tough spot. I asked the lady who was pushing a trolley full of her things, if there was anything I could do, if she knew where to go. And at the time, I wasn't really sure myself of the best places and ways to get someone into a drop-in center. And in the last 24 hours, I've spent my time finding the best list I could and have shared it already in my own personal network. We have to do these things because whilst we may be lucky, must, our partners might still be earning a salary, there is people out there who don't have a livelihood and we really do need to keep a lookout. Some people who are working from home are also finding a struggle. So even though you're in work, people can still not be okay. 55% are not looking forward to returning to the office. There's many reasons for this, but this is a fact that has been found by Coltramp survey. 66.66% won't feel safe being back in their workplace when the COVID-19 restrictions lift. That's two thirds of people don't feel safe in their workplace. We really need to increase that safety trust that I spoke about in our last episode. 63% won't feel safe traveling to and from work when the restrictions lift. And our governments and our companies need to do what we can to change this mentality. Otherwise our staff won't return back to work and being back to normal will not be so soon and so normal. Considering things like private uh, transport for your workforce is an option that is used in many countries but not very much in Australia and might be an option that we need to, to uh, consider, but also that we collectively speak with our public services and confirm that their new processes are safe and do provide the solutions that we need. 88% of people say that they have the resources to keep working from home if they need to. But I think we also need to consider that some of our staff don't have those resources. Some people have not been able to afford to go and buy a new table, buy a new desk. They don't have the space to lay out their work things and they don't have an extra screen, let alone a laptop, and they've had to borrow it from you and they don't have a keyboard. It just changes the parts of ability for people to really function and really do a great job of work at home. As we spoke about in previous episodes, the two types of people around in this world are type one, which is the people who have been working with intense intensity, such as the people who are working in hospitals, in transport and in logistics. The ones that have been working like their lives and others depend on it because they do. Then there's the type two people, which are still not right back at work. Either they're not working, they're waiting to restart, they're either temporarily stood down or they're working from home. And as I said, some people really like working from home, but some people really struggle. And then there's people that have lost their jobs entirely. And then there's people who are in businesses where it's still illegal to operate. It's time to think about our 88 mates, the people that are on day 88 and still their lives have been turned upside down. We talk about type one in a wheel of constant noise who are waiting for this pause. And we hope that a lot of those people have been able to get a little moment back to themselves. The type two people still waiting for a start are people who work in libraries. Libraries haven't opened yet. And the other challenge with the library not being open yet is that some of the people who sleep rough who normally take refuge in taking a, a rest in a library during the day, they haven't been able to do that. 
Then there's the people that work at cinemas, still not open. Casinos, still not open. Nightclubs, still not open. Convention centres, entertainment venues, still not open. And whilst there's been a partial return to some sporting venues, there has been partial reopening to pubs. These are not the levels of expect, expected uh, economic inputs for the owners. So it's very difficult for them to make the decisions to reopen for some. Places of worship are still not open. Places of leisure like strip clubs and, and uh, prostitute places, they are still not open. And there is still partial closures and just emerging reopenings to stadiums who are willing to reopen just to recommence and allow some parts of life to be normal. But remember, even if some businesses are open, some people have completely lost their chance to work as the business has taken such a hit from the COVID-19. As an employer, a friend, a colleague, it's our job to care. And it doesn't take that much effort to keep an eye out for people that we work with. We have to be on the lookout for our people, for our friends and our staff. Don't forget that they might be affected. Um, they might be affected because of their partners or their homes, uh, people at home might be affected. Be aware of prescriptions. Be aware of self-prescribed solutions and impacts. We have to also be aware that when something so dramatic as COVID-19 happens, when everybody has this dramatic and instant impact, this can have triggers for people who have a PSTD and it can cause relapses. An event like COVID-19 can trigger it. It can be a cue and it really adds to that trick when people's usual coping me me mechanisms have been altered or removed, like going to the gym, like going to the church, like going to sporting events, like going to the pub. Those things that have kept a rhythm and a routine and a rigor for people that are troubled with PSTD, they are having challenges right now. And this COVID-19 is simply, uh, can really cause an additional challenge to those with PSTD and other mental challenges that people have already been struggling with. Just changing the regular routine absolutely changes people who are not always okay. We have to consider what could be going on because for some of us, we are so lucky with a regular job, a regular salary, and our friends are fine as well because we hang out with those kinds of people, but we do need to know that there's other people than just us. And some of our friends might not be answering the phone. Some of our friends might not be uh, contacting you on social media. And some of our friends might not be able to come and visit you when you ask them to go for lunch or if you ask them to come over or if they want to call you. What do you think could be going on? These are the th some of the things that we need to consider. They might not be able to afford to go out with you. Their clothes might not fit anymore. And when you've lost your job and your clothes don't fit, going to buy new clothes is very difficult. You might be embarrassed for them to tell, they might be embarrassed to tell you that they've lost their job. They might be in an abusive, controlling relationship, which could have had an additional level of challenge in COVID-19 when both partners were at home. Their PSTD might be really throwing and making things super tough at the moment. They might actually be scared to go to social places because of COVID-19. They might mentally just not be okay. They might have developed an addiction during this period of time. 90 days, a lot can happen in 90 days. We have to expect unprecedented levels of not okay. And we have to look out for our day 88 mates. And we have to do that today. We suggest that you try the mateship manual by Are You Okay? They have a great lot of resources on the Are You OK website. And we believe that every day should be Are You OK Day. And we don't really believe in just one day. We think we should always look out for our people. We suggest that you call your workmates, your friends and your family. And we also think today is a great day to do it. 
We think you should ask. We think you should really ask. Humans need to know that someone else cares until the mojo moves back in. If you're not okay, ask for help today. And just remember, it's okay not to be okay. Things have really changed in the last 88 days and we really want to make sure that everyone we know, if they want to reach out, they can at any point in time. Pick up the phone, send us an email, send us a message. We'd love to, love to just chat. And if there's anything we can do to help, please give us a call. And if you wanted some additional help, there's some great uh, numbers here that you can either have for yourself or refer to a friend or a colleague in need from Lifeline, Men's Line, the Suicide Callback Service, Beyond Blue, Headspace, and Q Life. Thanks for listening, and don't forget your day 88 mates. <laughs>